and lean vascular injuries in robotic thoracic surgery, real-life cases using the fibrin-based hemostatic technique. In robotic thoracic surgery, bleeding from pulmonary vessels during dissection is uncommon but potentially life-threatening. This video illustrates a practical technique for controlling vascular injuries using a collagen-based hemostatic patch, preserving the minimally invasive approach and avoiding conversion. A collagen-based hemostatic patch is an absorbable collagen sponge coated with human fibrinogen and thrombin. It activates coagulation cascade upon contact with blood and promotes localized clot formation. It is particularly useful in robotic settings where vessel suturing is limited. Our step-by-step -step technique starts with the compression with gauzer sponge. After, we prepare the hemostatic patch using the other robotic arm. We perform a quick removal of the compressive material with immediate positioning of the patch over the bleeding site. Gentle compression is maintained over the patch for three to five minutes. And after that, we perform careful inspection for persistent bleeding. We are currently performing the section of the left pulmonary artery during a robotic surgery. An injury occurs, resulting in bleeding from the left pulmonary artery. Initial hemostasis is achieved through gentle compression with a dry gauze pad. Upon release, active bleeding resumes. We maintain direct compression while preparing the hemostatic patch with the other robotic arm. The gauze is swiftly removed and the patch is immediately applied over the bleeding site, followed by renewed compression with gauze on top of the patch. The goal is to ensure precise placement of the patch directly over the vascular injury and to maintain continuous pressure for 3 to 5 minutes. The gauze should not be overly wet to avoid displacement of the patch due to slippage. Slightly drier gauze helps improve adherence and stability. After the compression period, upon removing the gauze, we observe complete control of the bleeding with no signs of active hemorrhage. In this second case, while attempting to cauterize a minor bleeding point on the pulmonary vein, the lesion worsens, resulting in increased venous bleeding. Suturing attempt was unsuccessful. Following our technique, initial compression is applied with gauze. Simultaneously, the second robotic arm is used to immediately apply the hemostatic patch over the injury site. A new gauze is then placed over the patch to ensure firm local compression. After a few minutes of compression, effective hemostasis is achieved. In this case, during a pulmonary resection with dense adhesions to the chest wall, a subclavian vein injury occurs, leading to significant bleeding. Immediate compression is essential to prevent further complications. Using the contralateral robotic arm, the hemostatic patch is applied directly to the injury site, followed by immediate gauze compression to optimize the patch positioning and adherence.
After the recommended compression time, the gauze is gently removed, revealing completely hemostasis without the need for sutures or additional interventions. In this case, we are initially releasing adhesions of the upper lobe to the apex of the thoracic cavity. This is a right upper lobectomy due to pulmonary aspergillosis. During the section with the monopolar scissors, a small artery in the apical region was injured and continued bleeding despite our attempts at hemostasis. We decided to maintain compression and complete the adhesion release. Bipolar coagulation was attempted without success, and we identified a small artery that appeared to be an aberrant branch of the subclavian artery, directly supplying the diseased lung area. Given the situation, we opted to place a patch, and following the standard technique, we maintained compression for 3-5 to five minutes, achieving successful hemostasis. We can see that hemostasis was achieved in all presented cases with no conversions to open surgery and no bleeding related complications. Despite everything that has been presented, we must keep safety in mind, used only for accessible, localized and compressible vascular injuries. Avoid massive bleeding, uncontrolled hemorrhage, posterior vessel injuries or large complex lacerations. Consider alternative approaches in hemodynamic instability or coagulopathy. Always consider conversion if safe robotic control seems unlikely or if the surgeon doubts achieving hemostasis. In our experience, collagen-based hemostatic patches have proven to be effective for controlling vascular injuries during robotic surgery. They can be used for both arterial and venous bleeding, and in select cases, they allow the procedure to continue robotically without the need for conversion. They are safe, reproducible, and efficient within the robotic setting, but should always be applied in accordance with established safety considerations.